Okay, we are recording. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 112. WhatsApp goes full encryption. Now, 111 was uh, 10 security checkboxes, and I think this is this is going to trump it until next week. So we're going to take a pause from our security checkboxes, and we're going to talk about WhatsApp going full on, full encryption, and... This is a good thing overall. So uh, I think I'm going to let Tom, let's start us off with what is full encryption? Well, full encryption um, is actually the leading cause of crying and depression amongst FBI agents and law enforcement personnel. Uh, it's a very, very dangerous, very harrowing time for any law enforcement right now because encryption has broken out and it is spreading amongst the population. At least we are being told one billion people have become infected with end-to-end -end encryption. It's the largest plague that man has seen in a very long time. Exactly. Literally all terrorists have gone dark and our world is about to end. Well, not only terrorists, you have, uh, you have parents, you have mothers, you have blue bubbles and green bubbles. You Completely have, gone dark. You have teenagers. This is like a dihydrogen monoxide scale. Of oh, yeah. Infection. It's bad. Okay. So so I guess news broke yesterday. Today is Wednesday the 6th. So probably Tuesday morning that Facebook was going to encrypt, was going to do full-on end-to-end encryption with WhatsApp. Now, they did this before, and we've spoken about this. And we said, well, look at WhatsApp if you wanted something, but don't expect it because Facebook has the keys. But yesterday they said, you know what? We're throwing in the towel. We don't want your keys. Mainly stemming from the fact that Facebook is now at the eyes of the FBI. They're in their, their crosshairs. And they don't want to be in a position like Apple was in. So they're st publicly saying, hey, you know what? We don't want to deal with it. Find somebody else to deal with. We don't want to do it. So they they hired our favorite. I don't. I guess he's our favorite. Our favorite dreadlock haired guy, Mo uh, Moxie, yeah. Marlin, Moxie Marlin Spike, who is awesome with encryption. And uh, they said, "Hey, you did Signal. It works. Can you do, can you do it to us?" And he said, "Sure." And he did. So Open Whisper Systems, which uh, I, I believe Moxie started, I believe he was the, the founder of that, um, it created, they created Signal, which is the application that's end-to-end -end encrypted, uh, you know, using it, you are totally immune to law enforcement unless they grab your phone, unless they have control of the device, right? Or unless you message a police officer with it. So don't do that. Um, but it's, it's a great app, uh, but more importantly than the app uh, is they built something that has changed its name that I cannot pronounce because it is horrible. Um, they've changed the name to the Signal Protocol. Now, what the Signal Protocol is, is it's it's a set of guidelines. It's, it's a set of rules. It's a couple of libraries that say, hey, look, if you want to build an end-to-end -end communication application, use this package and build on top of that. Now, when it comes to your branding, how it looks, the colors, the themes, exactly how you're going to verify people, that's left up to the app developers. But the core component of communicating securely with end-to-end -end encryption, that's the Signal protocol. So WhatsApp partnered with Open Whisper Systems in order to you know, try to bring this to fruition. Uh, it was about a year ago that they started their partnership, and it's it kind of went quiet. Um, they announced a partnership. Everyone was excited, and then absolutely nothing happened until a couple days ago when Moxie Marlin, Spike, Open Whisper Systems, and WhatsApp announced simultaneously. They said, hey, uh, by the way, today... Everything on WhatsApp, the latest version, is end-to-end -end encrypted. Users don't have to do anything to turn it on. They don't have to think about encryption. They don't have to do weird key handshakes. It all just works. Now, there is a convenience trade-off with this, right? If you want to go super crazy NSA and, you know, link each other's keys together and, and trade the the 20 or 50-digit codes and um, you know, do you have threema thing of scanning QR codes? You could totally do that, but for everyone else, for normal people in the world, just by installing and using the chat application, how it's designed without checking any boxes, it's secure. And we're not talking like a little secure. We're not talking like, hey, you know, it's like Telegram, which is trash and awful, but it's encrypted where they store a plain text message on their server of everything you send. No, it's like legitimately 
insanely secure where WhatsApp literally cannot respond to law enforcement requests. They don't have the data. Well, let's before you we go into more detail, you do have to do one thing, and this is really easy. You have to update WhatsApp. They pushed out a new yes. version. I mean, I, I it shouldn't go without saying, but you, you got to update it. So if you're the type of person who waits for days and days and days to update apps, if you want the security, you have to update it and restart it and not your phone just go to your app store update it and it should and it should do it go go to if you want to check click on somebody's name at the very top it will give you a little uh, not warning message but some sort of message that says this is now end-to-end encrypted so you know who is and who isn't so just it's not completely foolproof but that's the only thing you have to do you just have to update it Right. And as time marches forward, what will happen is people either through automatic updates or changing phones or manually updating their WhatsApp client, all the people that aren't encrypted, that user base is going to shrink and shrink and shrink until it's gone because every version of WhatsApp going forward will be end-to-end encrypted. Now, let me ask you this. This is really question zero. Should Should we recommend to people that if you had a conversation with someone, you should completely start it over? That, that's my question. Um, I, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think that's a prerequisite. You're a phone person. So let me ask you an old school phone question. Remember how phones at nine nine oh one went free? You got unlimited minutes. And if yep. you were talking at 8.59, did you have to hang up with the person to reinitialize the call? Do you remember? Uh, that I don't know. I think it depended on your carrier and their billing system. So th- th- that's basically what I'm asking. If you were with somebody and all of a sudden now, did they go back and re-encrypt it? Or should, I mean, I almost want well, to people just start over. Like, what's the big deal? They're, they're not going to retroactively uh, encrypt old conversations, right? I would hope that they've, you know, tried to erase or get rid of old stuff like that. It might still be in their servers, right? Um, but uh, I can tell you that in talking, because there was a weird bug that we found yesterday where your side of WhatsApp said it was encrypted, but my side said it wasn't. I just got that notification minutes ago that popped in, in a little line item and said, hey, by the way, you're end-to-end encrypted now. I don't know if you have several devices with WhatsApp. They all have to be updated for that to happen. Uh, but it, you know, you know, from that line forward, those things are encrypted. Okay. Because I guess I like, so let's first start off. What is WhatsApp? And I mean, just as a, as a little history, when on the main show in 30, we covered this, uh, I don't know, two, two years ago, three years ago now, when Facebook bought them for what seemed like a ridiculous amount of money, 17 or oh, yeah. billion dollars with a B. And, Insane. And we said, what are they going to do with this? Well, turns out, Everyone in America has no idea what WhatsApp is. Basically, WhatsApp is just a chat client. It's an SMS replacement. It doesn't replace SMS, but it's just another conduit where you send data rather than rather than the SMS protocol. So you're sending data of text rather than SMS of text. And why that's important is because countries like Brazil and Central, a lot of Central American countries, Europe, India, China – Text message rates are ridiculous. Think of 20 to 50 cents a message. So, I mean, we remember this, I don't know, 10 years ago we were paying this. You were paying $30 for unlimited messaging when, and and I we were telling people then, you know what, just use Hangouts, use, use uh, what's it called, use email, use Facebook Messenger. There was a million other ways. But WhatsApp came along. It's actually an Israeli company. And they said, why can't we just do this? And they did. So, so the rest of this is a rest of the world type thing. And then it follows up with why isn't anyone in the US ever heard it? Well, because all the carriers made text messaging so easy and base essentially free that they that they got people to just use it. And everyone, hey, everyone has their phone on them. I mean, except for me, apparently. And SMS is basically, well, if you're not on text messaging, you're a dinosaur at this point. Yeah. So, you know, there's SMS basically supplanted everything in the U.S. because it was cheap at the time, or at least cheaper. Uh, And it got cheap at a time when smartphones weren't ubiquitous and an alternative didn't really exist except for email or Skype or, you know, desktop based uh, IM clients. There was not really one of those for 
for dumb phones. I remember using AIM on a dumb phone way back in the day, but it was awful. It was terrible. And the data rates on it, even for something stupid like AIM, were just ridiculous. Um, but, you know, in the rest of the world, when texting remained expensive and smartphones came to the forefront and, you know, even like old, old smartphones, like we're talking old Nokia stuff, uh, WhatsApp puts out this great app and they say, hey, look, you can text. It's not SMS, but you can text back and forth using our application. So go ahead and pull it. And and you know what? It was you still had that barrier to entry. You still had well. I just have text messaging. Like, why do I need to download this other thing? And these are one of the success stories where they just they just kept at it and they said, "Hey, look, remember SMS was uh, or no no WhatsApp was a dollar a year. You got your first year free." And then they said, "You know what? Why make all this money? I mean, that's a billion dollars they just threw out. One billion dollars, yeah. <laughs> uh, dollars." But they said, "You know what? This is now going to become important." And they they made it free. I mean, Facebook made it free. I guess they don't need it. I mean, how much traffic really goes through? And they said, and people got it. I, I always hear about a uh, family and friends saying, hey, I'm using WhatsApp for this conversation. Why don't you get WhatsApp? And I said, eh, you're the only one. And we still have that. You're the o- you are the only one. Yeah, I, I kind of avoided WhatsApp up until this point. I knew a couple people using it, but... You know, they were on Hangouts, too, so it didn't really matter. It was people I didn't really talk to that often. So, you know, well, why should I? Um, If there's another way to contact you, I'll just use that. Uh, But this uh, enabling end-to-end encryption through the signal protocol for everyone uh, has changed it. And um, I think I I am well on my way to completely replacing Hangouts with WhatsApp as my main message. And you have to remember, that's a big deal because a lot of people are on Chrome. Oh, yeah. I'm on a Chromebook most of the day. And if I didn't, if I wasn't using my old iMac uh, downstairs in the living room, I would be on a Chromebook there too. And one of my, and I keep on saying this, one of my requirements for a good chat client, it needs to have a very simple desktop support. I do not want my phone all the time with me. I want it on the table and I'm very good and I love my new keyboard. So thanks to Tom for that. My new keyboard is awesome and I would love to type on it full time. So why deal with, why deal with the really tiny screen when I can have a full keyboard and do a whole bunch of other stuff, copy and paste properly and pictures and everything else. So, and I was saying WhatsApp didn't have that client. WhatsApp didn't have it, I don't know, six months ago, eight months ago, and they weren't really secure. Facebook still controlled the key. So my message to Tom was secure until somebody knocked on Facebook and said, hey, give me the key. Now they're just saying, we don't even have the key. We don't want the key. You deal with it, not ours. Right. So... Yeah, one of the questions uh, was, you know, why why are they doing this? Why is WhatsApp um, building this? And really, uh, I, I think it comes from uh, their their main audience is outside the U.S. Right? It's the rest of the world. Um, Brazil is one of their biggest markets. The rest of the world is more concerned about the U.S.'s surveillance machine than Americans are. Um, and you know, that's that's sad of me to say uh it's kind of embarrassing really uh but the rest of the world is way more concerned about americans spying on them than the american people are about being spied on um and whatsapp can use this as a selling point they can say look it's end-to-end encrypted uh we know this is good we know it's tested uh you know it's battle hardened open whisper systems has been doing stuff like this for a long time Uh, it's built in the public the whole protocol is open um we we can be the ones to help you stick it to the man, to help you evade NSA surveillance um, or other state actor surveillance if you use our platform, um, which is – it's great. It's a great selling point, and it puts them head and shoulders above the rest of their competition, right? Because there's always Skype. There's Signal, of course. There's Telegram, which is you know growing in size. Uh, there's Facebook Messenger, and then there's you know the, the defaults that everyone has: iMessage, Hangouts, uh, BlackBerry Messenger, if that's still around in the other parts of the world. It's look, Brazil had an issue, and I think this is where it really stemmed from. I think this may have been the catalyst. A judge banned WhatsApp for 48 hours, and that was something like 93 percent of all messaging traffic was through WhatsApp, and basically the 
the other people in the government were saying, no, 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 we need this. You need to turn it back on. And it was, but we need to be able to read these. And just the overwhelming size of WhatsApp really pushed them through. And Brazil had to lift it because the world, they were just going to, they were just going to uprise. It was, it was, it was in December. So it's clear that people are using WhatsApp. Now we're not saying that, and again, people always say, well, well, I have nothing to hide. Like who really cares? And I keep on telling them, it's not about what you have to hide now. It's why do you want people knowing this? Why? Yes, it's where, Tom, Tom, what time are we recording tonight? 8 p.m.? That doesn't need to be secure. But if it can be, we should just do it. Why not? And if yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt you to encrypt it, right? Uh, and now I, I get it, I get it. If you're, you know, if you're sending an email to your grandma, and you know, first off, you've got to find a way to get your grandmother using PGP through an email client, right? That is like Mount Everest-sized, insurmountable odds. But then beyond that, when your grandmother emails you and she says, hey, what time are you coming over for dinner? She's got to encrypt it. She's got to sign it. She's got to bust out her long passphrase that she stored in a password manager. And like it's, it, she's got to switch over to you know Tails, her live distro, so she can email. I'm not saying that no grandmother can use PGP. I'm just saying it's insane. You actually have to change your behavior to make yourself secure. With what WhatsApp did, you don't have to change anything. You literally can be the laziest WhatsApp user on the planet and still get encrypted. You just got to update so, it. You just got to update it. Yeah, it's just the update. That's literally you update and then you continue using it and you are now encrypted, right? This is the best form of security known to man. It's like SSL. It, it, most people don't know what SSL means or TLS or HTTPS. They have no idea. But every time they log into their bank, automatically without anything magical happening or without them doing anything weird or special, their connection is now encrypted. And that's that's the type of security we should be aiming for. And I also want to add as a feature is this WhatsApp web. So if you go to web.whatsapp.com, they did a really nifty thing. I was very bearish on this in the beginning. It was a Chrome extension and you had to launch it and it was a problem, just almost like Signal, but I got used to it. Here, it's you go to web.whatsapp.com, you take out your phone, you scan the QR code, and this, this interface comes up, and you can just leave it on. So it does, you don't have to, it's a zero install thing. And then you can log out from your phone. So if you're at the library, you can turn it on, and, and barring a keystroke logger, everything's encrypted. And when you leave, you can say, oh, shoot, I forgot to do it. Well, you just go on your phone, and you can log out of all sessions. So, th so they made it zero install. A, a very nice desktop client that you can pin on and it's and it works everywhere and everything just transfers over now it uses your data your phone has to be connected for it to send but it, it does it it does it pro i think it does it properly it does um and actually moxie marlin spike was on twitter uh confirming how the web version of whatsapp works with this new encryption scheme and it's slick it's really cool there's a lot of technical details behind it but whatsapp did this properly so and so you can you can read it it's it the the website even looks pretty there's a big lock with a check mark so that clearly means that it's secure but absolutely the best and lock and check mark security yeah so they they did it now the next question is how are they going to make money and i don't know if there's a i think it's what they're not doing is they're not breaking phones for the FBI. They are not sending their really expensive security researchers to having to to reverse engineer these keys and having to answer answer all these requests. I think that's the best way for them to make money, making money and not well, making money. So, so WhatsApp is owned by Facebook, and frankly, um, yeah, someone from WhatsApp might be able to correct me on this, but I don't think they have to. Um, now, one per uh, well, a couple of people pointed out on Twitter that yes, the contents of your messages, your calls, your audio files, your anything you send in WhatsApp, that is all end-to-end -end encryption, end-to-end -end encrypted. But the metadata is not right. WhatsApp is based around phone numbers, so they can still see you know this guy's phone number talk to this person's phone number, which talk to this person's phone number. So we know that these people are connected in some way. That metadata is still clear text. Encrypting metadata is a very, very difficult problem. Uh, and there are 
kind of solutions in place, but none of them are really easy or seamless at the moment. Uh, but what Facebook gets from buying WhatsApp is they get to see the social graph. They get to see the connections. And if you have a Facebook account uh, or you a Facebook user has given Facebook access to their contact list, they can see, oh, this phone number is this person and he's connected to these people. Uh, and it's very helpful for their algorithms, uh, for understanding their user base. Facebook is all about connections and building a social graph and WhatsApp really helps set out. Look, it's, I think you're hit, hit the point on it. I, it. I don't think they need to make money. They have Facebook Messenger for that. Facebook Messenger is going to be their product for everything else. This is trying to get and and we and Mark Zuckerberg has said he wants to bring internet to the third world. He wants with their zero internet uh, thing in in India and and if this is another way to get people to recognize the name Facebook, Facebook gave us this. I think in the future it's gonna it's gonna pay dividends. It may not now, but. Look, I still think not having to answer these uh, requests to break the encryption, I, I think that makes them money without having in the opposite way. So, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of companies. I mean, there, there are companies that have dedicated teams to solving the issue of government requests because government comes to big tech companies like Microsoft or Google or Facebook or et cetera. There's a bunch of these companies or Reddit, and they say, hey, we want – this data, this list of data for this for these people. And sometimes it's as easy as, oh, well, here, let me give you a database dump. There you go. It, it, but that still takes time out of a day, right? And sometimes it's it's got to be like a major witch hunt delving through all these weird archaic systems. Can you imagine if someone's got a Microsoft account and they do a bunch of stuff with Microsoft and the government says, hey, we need everything you have on this guy. Now, I don't know how many of you listening out there have worked in large, old, established companies, but I've worked for a couple um, where there's like 90 disparate systems that aren't connected in any way. And then you've got to dig through all of them to try to connect this data. It is huge work. It is a huge time sink. And it costs real money to do that. It costs real people hours to try to get these answers. And what WhatsApp has done is they just say, look... <laughs> We have nothing. We can't give you the data. And that's going to save a lot of time. Now, our, the question is, has the code been audited? And I guess the answer is yes, because it's Signal, right? The Signal protocol has been audited. Now, WhatsApp's implementation itself, um, I don't believe so. But keep in mind, they were working hand-in-hand -hand with Moxie and Open Whisper Systems to put this in place. Okay. So now the next few questions deal with SMS. Because in the U.S., everyone uses SMS, and and while you want, remember, SMS is good if you want to if you want to say, "Hey, I'm leaving work now" or whatever it is. If you're on your phone and you're talking to someone else on your phone, it's good. But it doesn't work if you have no reception, and it doesn't work somewhere else unless you install some weird push bullet system to your browser. It's there and it's clear text. It's in the open and. And there's no barrier for you. You could just walk into Verizon and say, hey, I need a list of messages. I think it takes them less than 24 hours to get them to you. So there is no security. There is no barrier. There is nothing there. So that's why you shouldn't use SMS. And I understand. But I like SMS. I think SMS is great. Why do I have to install something? Well, that's on you. We, we, we really can't answer that. But I think it would make a lot more sense to, for the people that you the people that you love to tell them, hey, let's move off off SMS. It's gonna if you if we convinced you, you should try to convince your friends and family to do it. But I know that's hard, and we're gonna see that still being hard for the foreseeable future. Yeah, and, and I mean, signal signal was kind of a big a big hard thing to push on people because it's brand new. There, you know, when it launched, there were literally no users or just just the users of Tech Secure uh, around. And, you know, frankly, the users of Tech Secure, uh, it's not a big group, right? It's 
it's a very small group of very nerdy security minded people. Um, and, and when it converted to signal, it was the same way, right? It didn't grow hugely, crazily taking over the world, billion users. Uh, WhatsApp is a bigger platform. There are more people on it. When I looked at my contact list, I'm like, man, all of these people are on WhatsApp and I had no idea. Um, it's, it's a lot easier to push someone towards something that's more popular. Uh, and now it's got the added benefit of being secure. And then you have, so look, Apple figured it out with iMessage. If you make the icon do something else and not tell people, it's going to work. So what iMessage did is said, hey, you can message other uh, iPhone people without paying the fee. And then, you, then all of a sudden we got this blue bubble, green bubble thing. So if you send a group message, all the people on iPhones would be blue bubbles and all the non-iPhone people would be green bubbles. And that caused a huge bunch of problems. We've covered that. But basically, Apple's, Apple figured this out, how to move people off. The problem is that is that you didn't have to install anything. Here, you actually have to install something, which is not a big deal. Remember, we're telling you a billion people use WhatsApp and it's not and it's not everyone in the rest of the world and then like one or two people in the US. You'd be surprised, like Tom said, how many people use it. And if you just tell people, hey, can you send me messages on WhatsApp? I promise I won't be a blue bubble or a green bubble. It'll make it easier. It'll help us out. You'll see some adoption. You're not going to get everybody, but you're going to start seeing some adoption. And with that said, the iPhone people, and that's the next topic, the iPhone people are going to be the hardest group to switch because of iMessage. That is very true. Uh, bef- um, I, iMessage is kind of the bread and butter of, of iPhone users. Well, I want to get back to Signal. Uh, somebody, Paul, Paul on the other show asked us, well, what is Signal versus WhatsApp? WhatsApp replaces the idea of a text message. So it's a completely different app. It uses your phone number, but there's no SMS client. So it's a separate app that you have to install and you cannot make it your your SMS client. It does use phone numbers to identify the person, but you cannot send a text message. Signal, on the other hand, is a text message client replacement. So if the person doesn't have Signal, it will send them it will send them an unencrypted text message. So we're not saying to get rid of Signal. We're just saying, hey, if you're if you're on Android, this is an Android thing because if you're on iPhone, it's going to be impossible to get you off iMessage. Make Signal your default text message client. So if someone decides, hey, I'm going to switch to Signal, they can do it versus the Samsung uh, whatever they give you. And then if you want to start using WhatsApp, that's a different program that you have to install and get people to use. So those are the two differences. Right. Uh, you know, I, I think that oh, I'm trying to think of a great way to word this. Um, but so signal the signal itself, I think should be looked at. Yeah. It's a product. It's, it's built it's ready for use. It's not a beta in any way. But I feel like Signal is more of a reference implementation than an actual messaging platform. It's, you know, the Signal protocol is really the core. It's really the thing that makes all this work. And the Signal is the layer on top of it. They said, look, this is how you build a GUI around this amazing Signal protocol that we made. You know, Signal is the greatest reference imp- implementation for a truly secure messaging platform, or at least the best one we've seen so far. Um, there's still the ever-present metadata issue, but you know the the actual use case, the actual uh, end product that end users will see that you'll put on a shelf and slap a label on it and try to give it to people. I think that's WhatsApp at the current moment. It basically, if you're on Android, Google has Google basically got rid of their. SMS client and they're trying to push you to Hangouts and then they decided to go back and say, don't use Hangouts, use our Google Messenger. And if you're on a Samsung phone, they give you their own. So there's no real winner in the SMS texting app area. So if that's the case and you want a text message, go with Signal because if you cre- you'll you create an account and you tell people, hey, use Signal, you be people may sign up for it. And if not, you at least have, you're signed up for it. But if you want to convince people, hey, if you want to get rid of the green bubble and blue bubble issue, if you want to say, hey, let's all move to this. Let's have a family group chat and we won't have to worry about different things and your other friends will be on it and this and that. And there's a desktop client. Go to WhatsApp. 
that that's that's really the 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 way to sell it i guess i mean in my mind yeah and it's it's a whole lot easier uh you know i know for for this show's recommendation for you know what <laughs> i cannot believe we just had the what messaging app should i use uh, episode and now we have to completely upend it again uh, and tell people, hey, look, the signal is great, it's awesome, but it's a little more technical and it doesn't have the user base that you need. Uh, WhatsApp is probably the one to go to. So that's going to be our, our default recommendation of what app should I go with for messaging. And then the last part is, and this is really nifty. So it says that you're secure. You have a lock, but we all know don't always just trust the lock. If you go into your settings, if you hit the three, the, the three uh, vertical buttons, by the way, this is not material design yet, which gets me a little mad, just a little, just, just don't get there. I don't get there. It's Facebook. Come on. It, it, you get $19 billion making material design. But if you hit the three buttons, it says, hey, verify. Now, you have to do this on your phone. It gives you a barcode. So go with your friend and and look at their barcode. You can scan it and it will say, yes, this is the person. Or no, this is not the person. You've been man in the middle, I guess, if, if you want to say that. But that's how you can verify the security, which is an awesome way to do it. So. Yeah, it's it's really cool. And then there's another checkbox that says, "Hey, you know, if if my if my contact keys ever change, let me know." Uh, by default, it won't because some people will change their phones and log in again, and that's fine. Uh, but someone could be impersonating your buddy, and so just another thing to keep in mind. Look, and then again, you have the read receipts that SMS does, and so how many times are you sitting outside someone's house waiting to pick them up, and you send them a message, "Hey, I'm here," and they never got it, but you didn't know. Uh, I mean, yep. oh, the one way I would say, and I, I want to end with this because we just ran over uh, how to make money. I told Tom this before in app purchases have other ways. I've like crazy wallpapers, have stickers, have all these, not, I don't want to say integrations, but have other stuff that doesn't affect the, the encryption model, but just makes it look prettier. Maybe a material design overhaul for a couple bucks. Or even a donation thing. Hey, if you like the security, send us some money. I mean, it's Facebook, so that's hard. But some in-app purchases with stickers and emojis and this and that may be a way to make some money. Yeah, it's selling cosmetics never hurt anything, I don't think. So, so, and you have emoji support, it looks like, on both the desktop and the web. So it's definitely a good thing. Yeah. You've got all the media, so you can send videos pictures, audio files, which I didn't know. You can send audio no, do, clips, I do people, not, which is really cool. No, don't send anyone audio files. That's called a voicemail. <laughs> anyway. It's great. You can now send voicemail in WhatsApp. So anyway, let's end with that. If you have any other questions, we're here. And we've moved our security, uh, security group security chat from Signal to WhatsApp to, again, we're, we're telling you we're going all in with this. So if you want to be a part of it, it'll be much easier to join us. Just let us know. You'll find us. And say, hey, we want to get into your security uh, WhatsApp group, and we'll be more than happy to add you. So anyway, Tom, let's say goodbye, and we will see everyone next week. See everyone. Bye, everyone. Good. Done.